<laughs> Jacques and Kay, back again. Sunny day, summer's here, pretty much. Feels like it's getting here. It's getting here, which means summer crops are getting here. They're in the greenhouse, they're in the seed cabinet, they need to get in the garden. So <laughs> yeah. today is the summer seed soiree. So Jacques, I've got a bit of a potato harvest that I've done over the weekend. I saw it, it was pretty uh, thick looking harvest. It's, a, it's a, it was a massive yield. Cause we had a uh, late blight basically is what happened to our potatoes. I left these cause they don't have it. Yeah, they actually look a lot better. And so we're gonna let those run because as, as you've said, and as I've learned, really just let the top foliage die completely. That's really your best bet. So what that means is this area is now open for, for business at the old, <laughs> <laughs> store of Kevin. I mean, look at this though. Like, I what, just what, grabbed the potato. What was this? I mean, that's like a nice little chunk of organic matter, that's right? That's some OM if oh. I've ever seen some. There's so what little, I'm going to do though, Jacques, I don't have, um, I don't have any biotone. I'm just going to use tomato tone. I'm going to do a big sprinkle because we're putting corn in a chunk Woo. of this bed here. <coughs> Let me get, <laughs> all right. Let's see if we find any potatoes in here. The problem is there's, there's potatoes deep guaranteed. All right. I want you to though to tell the world, what you think about Russian banana? Garbage. <laughs> Don't ever grow that potato. We've tried it two years in a row in both of our gardens. It is a POS of a potato if I've ever seen one. There's no point in growing them. There's no point in eating them. I They're seen... garbage. All we're trying to do here is just level and mix. We're going in with corn. Uh, we're gonna have to go over there, Jacques, because we've got the seedlings. Ooh. Oh. The seeds. Maybe uh, Why don't you take, take that, that home. home. A little lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in the back pocket Eat for later. Eat like a king over here. <laughs> so anyways, we're just uh, leveling. Oh my God, dude. Really? Dude, what is going on? No way. <laughs> so, uh, my girlfriend potato? and I really spent time, Jacques, uh, <laughs> trying to harvest, but. There might be a honey hole over here. Might be a little honey pot. I remember this was a fruitful area. Oh, I'll say that it. much. That's it. You know what, just for the people, just for the people, just for you guys, we'll do it. We'll do a little potato harvest right now. Okay. Why not? We'll do one. This one's really not looking that great. That's to be honest. Fair. So here's what I like to do. I do this. Oh. I know I'm gonna get <laughs> nearly none off the actual, right? <laughs> but what I'm looking at is... It's not bad. Really impressive. So here's what I do. I, I go, here's the center, right? <laughs> Just, I come oh, off okay. the center and I try to undercut the whole thing, the whole zone, right? All right, show the me that gold. Potato sphere, as we call it. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, little bo oh. Just Look a little casual bonus right there. Little, little baby. bonus. My experience in grow bags with potatoes is a little bit disappointing, but when I grew them in ground or in a raised bed, very impressed. Yeah, I think what you really need is they can push their way through, as we've seen, some pretty tough soil conditions. Yeah, totally. Um, but the sarpo mirrors in that front yard bed that we just recently pulled, Crushed. those ones did quite well in a pretty loose mix. Why don't you break down what's in the box? So we got some popcorn. I don't know if we need a whole bed of popcorn. Probably but not. We have two different kinds, the strawberry one. I know you've grown that one before. Yeah, I'll skip that this year. It was nice though, it's nice. And then we got honey and cream. Okay, that's a sweet corn, obviously. Yeah, which sounds really nice. Uh, it's 84 days, so it's a pretty standard. Yeah. Then we got- So it's May 2nd or 3rd right now. Um, yes. So knee high by the 4th of July actually puts us in a good position for that. And then- Probably will be a little bit higher. This one over here uh, is sugar baby. It's yeah. only 65 days. I mean, so if you're in a cold climate, that's the one you're definitely going to want to grow. I'm interested in doing a double block then. Sure. Oh yeah. There's probably enough space. Yeah, there is. Yeah. 20 days of space. Yeah. And then there's butter gold, another 60 day variety. When you say 20 days of space, Jacques, what do you mean? So if it takes, this says it'll take 60, let's just say one's 80, one's 60. Yeah. So there's 20 days in between when they're ready to harvest, which means that when they tassel or produce pollen mm -hmm. and flower, then they'll be separated. They'll have enough gap that they're not gonna cross pollinate and create a hybrid. Cause it would be a very big mistake if we had planted two different varieties with the same days to maturity right next to one another. Yep. Because what you're eating when you eat corn is a bunch of seeds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so the actual cross pollination is what you're eating. Unlike something like, you know, peppers where yes, those seeds would be cross pollinated in theory, but it doesn't really matter because you're eating the fruit flesh exactly. more than you are the it's seed. It's kind of a weird distinction, but basically when they pollinate, whatever forms is what you're getting yeah. and that's what you're eating. So you yeah. don't really, since these are both sweet, it probably doesn't matter that much. But if one was like popcorn, one was sweet, you wouldn't, yeah, that'd you're be not a gonna big have a mistake. good time. You're you, not gonna have a good will, time. It will effectively, it will ruin both. Yeah. 
So I'm just pre-moistening and sort of shaping this bed level because we're gonna direct sow the corn. And I'm gonna give it a nice soak afterwards because corn's pretty tough hull. I wanna make sure that it actually germinates. All right. So what do you got for me? The board is going to give you something very satisfying, yeah. which is an extremely straight line. Yeah. So if we were to plant rows of corn, yeah. just go like this, that's going to be a perfect straight line mm -hmm, of corn. Mm -hmm. So I we like could that. separate our grids, have yeah. like really tight spacing, really linear corn. You know what I like too? Now that you've put me on this? Yes. Here's what I like. I like saying, here's my bed edge, right? Yeah. So we're going to come in, we're going to do a board. Yeah, and you can right. shoot it down, we'll shoot carry it all that the way line. Down. Now that's a perfectly, essentially straight line. Yeah. We could plant in a very nice row right there. Yep. So we'll do that. We'll go six inches, right? There it is. We'll do this. Yeah, I did all my three sisters corn six inches apart. So the two we're gonna end up planting are honey and cream and butter gold. Butter gold is 63 days. Honey and cream is 84 days. So that should give us a nice separation. Both are sweet corn. We talked potatoes, now we're talking <laughs> sweet potatoes, which, as you might know, aren't actually even close to the same plant. They don't grow really the same way, almost at all. Yeah. At least from the plants out, you know? <laughs> yeah, like you can't take a cutting from a potato and plant it and get more potato. At least I don't think you can, you might be able to. So we're going in with sweet potatoes. These are slips. So this is what comes, you're gonna have the potato here. It's gonna root up. There's gonna be roots on the bottom of the potato in the jar. And then you're gonna break these off and then these will root as they are here. And then you go ahead and plant these. So we have, uh, what, four different varieties. Yep. Uh, I, I like these. Yeah, the exactly. Japanese ones. I actually really just wanna go Japanese just only in this Let's one. Because I, I really like these Murasakis. They're like less, um, the thing I usually don't like about sweet potatoes is that they're honestly usually too sweet for me. Really? And the Murasaki, the Japanese style, like with the white inside. Look at the leaf, or sorry, the root. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's, that's sort of gonna purple. go. That's gonna yeah, go. Yeah, it's gonna be really nice. Um, but yeah, they yeah. just taste better to me. So Jacques, I'm just gonna. This this had the Sarpo Miro potatoes we were talking about earlier with a huge yield. About there are about five potatoes in here. Big. I think we got about 15, 20 pounds out of just this birdie's <laughs> yeah. tall round bed here. Wild. And so we're gonna do a big amend. Reason being, well, why not? But also that uh, sweet potatoes long season crop. That's true. Let's give them something to to chew on. <laughs> <laughs> down here but the reason i chose this bed jock is because this the soil is already pretty loose oh yeah you're and right. and the we... sweet potatoes really want a bit of sand if you can get it in there there's not a lot of sand in here but it's far looser soil than the average bed that i've got i don't know why it's just <laughs> i mean we definitely tore it up when we pulled the potatoes out yeah so that helps a little bit but even before that the potatoes were growing in oh, relatively right. loose right. soil you know so i i think you go one there you know, you could just uh, do this. Four and then one in the middle, maybe? Four and then one in the middle, like that. I think you just do that. I think that works. That's easy. Okay. You could do my new favorite method of planting, the trowel slide in. So I, I love the trowel slide try. in. You come in, boom, pull it to then, the side. Oops. oops. Yeah, when it's wet, it works a lot better. Better when it's wet, yeah. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, <laughs> go in there. <laughs> As they say. <laughs> so there you go. So pretty deep. In pretty deep. There's even a case. Look, that's a root nodule that would come out right there. Yeah. I think there's a strong case for me to go even a little bit deeper. Right. I'm going to do the fast pull pop in. So. Okay, let's hear it. Oh, okay. 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 That actually works. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. So I go, here's what I do now. I come in. Oh, I do, you're I do, the, I do the seismic shift. <laughs> See? Oh, I like that. Look at I that. like that. Look at that. It comes in a little <laughs> bit lower every time. It's very customizable. You can get it to the exact depth that you want. I'm here for that. I think um, last year, Jacques, we did in the wine barrels, we did the yeah. sweet potatoes. And we just planted them far too late. I would say certainly a month at least after this. The other just thing, too late. The other thing is that over there, they get a little bit of afternoon shade. Yeah. Here it's gonna get full sun. Blasted. <laughs> All year round. Blasted. Probably gonna get some big potatoes out of here. I think so. And sweet potatoes and potatoes, by far, some of my favorite plants to consume. High calorie yielding too. Yeah, high calorie. So we got these sweet potatoes in. Do we want to add any more up here? Do we want to do them in the back? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, here's the t tricky part for me. You don't this want is, it just to be sweet potatoes. Well, this is timing. Like those onions right behind you in that, that short urban round looking really good, but they're not ready. You need that neck to be cracked, right? These ones over here in the, the original eight and one, they're looking amazing, 
but they're still about a month from a crack, right? Dude. And what I mean by that is that that shoot that's coming up, you want it to look like this before you harvest the onion. That means that it's actually died off at that point and you have a tighter seal at the top of the onion, especially after you cure it. Dude, those are big onions too. Come, come, over, come over and look at these onions, guys. Come over and look at these onions. These are, these are crazy. I mean, come on, look at this guy. That one's also huge. There's a huge one over there. Well, what's crazy, dude, is, but, I mean, look at that honker. Yeah, here's a hand for scale. Hand for scale. So. But here's what's <laughs> crazy, dude. Big boy. You think this one's like just not bulbed up yet? Uh-huh. False. Oh. It just simply wow. isn't revealed. See? Damn. Good potato year. Or er, <laughs> onion year. Good <laughs> potato and onion year. Yeah, I mean, it's been a good year in general. These leeks look fabulous, too. What do you think? Should we? You want to do a test pull? <sighs> I, I mean, know. they're they're ready whenever, right? I kind of don't, but I kind of do. This one looks like it could. You could make a case to pull it. Wow, there's some strong roots. This was I is what I was slightly worried about. Is I didn't hill the leeks up at all, so I don't oh, have right. a ton of white material here. I could use about that much of the leek for classic leek purposes. Of course, you could fi figure out something to do with this, but yeah, you know, it's more of a would you. It smells good though. Smell it really hits. We're coming to the greenhouse. We're gonna raid the tomatoes. And it's not even a raid, Jacques, because <laughs> I think they are crying to be taken, right? Yes, I agree. <laughs> so I've got some in the four cells, got some in the six cells, got some clones over here, rootstock tomatoes over here. <laughs> yes. What's your philosophy on tomatoes this year? Every year we sort of change. I know? agree. So this year, first of all, I'm rotating. I'm not planting in the same bed. Right. I got hit with the root dot nematode. Yep. And then second of all, I'm not putting them all in one bed. So mm. before I just stack dance. them in rows, yeah. exactly. Now I have separate rows, different areas for that airflow. I need that airflow. Are, so are you doing separate rows for the airflow, but are you going to say like beefsteak row, slicer yes. row? Yeah, I have, I have yeah. a big boy row. Yeah. And then I have another big boy row. Then you got a and small then boy. And then I get some my cherry toms, cherry my little babies. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Well, here's where I'm at. I'm at, I want to target no more than three, to, mm, no more than four of each classic type. No oh, more than okay. four cherries, no more than four beefsteaks, no more than four heirlooms. Got it. Uh, and so, I mean, look, I've got yet red, yellow brandy wine. Okay. To me, that's a go. Put it in. So that's a one, right? San Marzano. Now, if it's a paste, I'm gonna go a little higher because oh, I, I can do whatever the hell I want with pastes, right? Yeah, I agree. So I'm gonna go San Marzano. I'm gonna put all four of those in probably. And that's a good candidate for your method, where you say, this is my paste exactly. zone, you know? Rainbow blend cherry. That goes in. Throw it in. That Throw goes in. in. So I honestly, like Super I Super sweet 100 F1. Yeah. I think at this point in the season, like the advantages of potting up don't Sun matter gold. anymore. Sun gold. So let's just pop them. Pop them, pop them, drop them. Wild your... boar, beauty king, that's going in 100%. Oh yeah, that was one of your favorites last year. Uh, we have Amish paste. So I'm starting to get this idea in my head, guys, of it's cannon season, you know? So I'm going- They're trying to preserve. Uh, Marzano's and pastes, that's gonna be a zone yeah. of the garden. And actually, I've always wanted to try the Amish paste. I've yeah. heard legend. Well, you, I've got six, so you can do it. Yeah, I got right. more Marzano's here too. And then I've got the glacier. I think it's a little late in the season to want to put a glacier in, because that's that 65 dayer. Yeah. I don't really think I need to do that. That's determinant, but whatever. Cherokee right. carbon. Uh, I lost, need this lost one. Some friends. I need this one. Yeah, we do. Because actually. we need this one because we grafted the Cherokee carbon to the Fort Amino rootstock, and this is the only one we have left as the control. So we're going to take this one in. Oh, the current tomato. Oh, that's we're going to do that one. one. For I've sure. never grown those before. Either. It's going to be a weird boy. Wow, look how small the leaves are. It's like even the leaves are small, not just the yeah, tomato. Yeah, it's a itself. bizarre, bizarre tomato. Maybe we should do a grafting sesh today instead of a. Oh, this is the rest of the show, guys. This is the rest of the show. We go grafting mode. Okay, I'm, I'm here Let's for Let's graft it. everything, Amish paste, graft three, don't graft the other three. Okay. Right? Because we've got, let's get another Should tray. Should we hit it with oh. the cleft graft? I, I got trays, I'll get We're trays. Playing, we're playing a tune today. So we've got big Fortaminos here. There's a tomato out here called McDonald Giant Tomato. Really? I don't know where that came from. Neither do I. So these are Fortaminos. All of these. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's take it on over to the grafting table. So what I'm gonna do, Jacques, is I'm gonna start with the Beauty King. I don't know if I want one or two of these. I don't know. I'd say you might as well try two on the well off try chance two. that one doesn't make it. Yeah, actually that's a good point. It's a good point. <laughs> so that tool is a spe specifically made for grafting. Yeah. It makes it really nice and repeatable because it has an angle guide so you get an exact cut 
to match your other cutting. I'm gonna go in with just a razor blade, like uh, this is an Astro like shaving blade. Yeah. And uh, let's see, so I got big Ford Aminos. Who do I wanna put oh, on Oh, you them? put this in, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go below. A little chop. I'm gonna select something over here. And I need to go below the graph. Oh. Below this, right? I'll do this. So I'm going to do San Marzano. I think this is a really interesting use case because yeah. San Marzano's, um, I wouldn't say that they're the most vigorous. They're very famous, but they don't yield that much traditionally, I th believe. I don't think so. And so. Although last year I got a ton, honestly. Oh, really? I did get a ton. Remember that front bed? I just oh, kind of went you're wild right, with right, it. Right, right. So, so I'm going on halfway, Jacques, kind of like that. Looks good. Doing halfway and then slider on. And we're good. So I'm gonna just chop the top off this Ford Amino. Oops. It's like yeah, so. might be a good idea. Cause I'm gonna just come in straight down the middle here and then cut uh, like half an inch down. The nice thing is I just cut the top off. The bottom I'm still gonna leave to grow and we could still use that tomato if we want to. Totally, that's the nice part about the cleft graft. Yeah, you're not okay, so actually I'm doing, losing much. I think I'm fine, it just doesn't look that good. So there we go. So all I did is I cut this into a, like a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna just slide it right into that cleft. So I'll do one more. I'll do one more Beauty King because it's probably my favorite uh, beef steak I'm growing this year. Oh, yours looks nice. Your cleft looks uh, that nice. That was a little touch and go for a minute. So see, look at this. Uh, on this, uh, I, I'm gonna have to come above. Yeah. The seed. So you can match it. Yeah, I need to match. So here's a unique one, Jacques. I'm coming all the way up here. Mmm. So you can get that diameter check. I, I need that that diameter. And I'm gonna come in with your razor and take this leaf off. All right, so there's a San Marzano cleft graft. That's one. That's a nice graft. Look at that. It's a clean one. You can't that even tell. You can't even tell. You can't see it. Can't even tell. Might as well be fused already. Very nice. Ready to grow. That's the benefit of this tool. Yeah. Is you get a perfect match cut. Jock and I have a ton more grafting to do. We need these to set, get healthy, and then go out in the tomato garden, which has yet to be planted. Yeah. So stay tuned, subscribe if you want to try this out botanicalinterest.com, our seed company. Good luck in the garden and keep on growing.